This is a Quiet Loud Studios production, the podcast network where reflection meets amplification. Hello, Athlete Mindset community. This is Lisa Bontasumi, the host of Athlete Mindset. Before we dive into this episode, I want to invite you to support the mission and purpose of our show. For $10 a month, you can help to make sure these conversations get to as many athletes, teams, coaches, and sport mental health environments as possible. As a subscriber, you will receive exclusive content and updates on current topics in athlete mental health, and you'll be directly contributing to the betterment of mental health for all athletes. Join the cause. Subscribe at sportse.io slash athlete and make a difference today. Again, that's sportse.io slash athlete. With your support and amplification, we can ensure more voices are heard and more individuals and communities are positively impacted. Hey, everybody. It's Lisa Bontasumi here with the Athlete Mindset Podcast. And I have an amazing, amazing person and guest with me today, Angela Lee Pucci, the founder and executive director of Fight Story, is a retired professional MMA fighter and a six-time MMA world champion. Her illustrious career in combat sports has fueled her passion for mental health advocacy, particularly within the fighter community. Angela's journey includes surviving her own suicide attempt in 2017 and enduring the heartbreaking loss of her sister, Victoria, to suicide in 2022. These personal experiences have deepened her commitment to mental wellness, driving her to establish Fight Story, a mental health nonprofit organization inspired by Victoria Lee's life. As a dedicated fighter, storyteller, and mental health advocate, Angela uses her platform to amplify fighters' voices and shed light on their mental wellness journeys. Her leadership at Fight Story aims to revolutionize combat sports by providing comprehensive support and resources for fighters' mental and physical well-being. Angela's mission is to inspire hope and champion a global movement for mental health awareness through combat sports. Angela, welcome. Thank you. So glad you're here. We're gonna have a little a little chat, and and I'm excited. Yes, and talk okay. about these very important, significant topics in your life. I know in our conversations leading up to this that you grew up on the mat with your siblings. Your parents were fighters, and as you mentioned, you were an MMA champion. But first, at age 19, which is really young, if you could, what was your life like? in your teenage years leading up to your championship title? How would you describe it? Yeah, I think when I look back to my childhood and teenage years, teenage years, I was very rebellious. (laughs) My parents wanted me to be homeschooled, and that happened from around 7th grade until 10th grade. And, um, yeah, they just, they thought that I was, too wild (laughs) and they were trying to try to tame me and that doesn't work out (laughs) usually uh so i mean but the upside to being homeschooled was we were able to travel a lot for competitions Mm. and things like that and i just remember martial arts always being a part of my life ever since i was young my siblings and i we had to train like it was like you have to come home do your homework and you gotta go train and uh i remember like of course like as a kid as a teenager that's not what you want to be doing all the time but now that i look back on it i'm like well maybe if i didn't commit all that time and years to martial arts maybe I wouldn't have achieved what I did at such a young age as well. So there's always pros and cons. And I mean, looking back, I, well, I can't change anything, but looking back, uh, I think 
it all led me to where I was meant to be because mm-hmm. through martial arts, I met my husband and now have our daughter together. And yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. What do you think martial arts has taught you about yourself as a person? I really feel like it teaches you so much and it really helps you prepare for many things that you will face in life. I mean, it does teach you like, you know, discipline and work ethic and just having that drive to do difficult things. And Mm -hmm. oftentimes when you don't want to do it, so it builds that kind of like resilience inside of you. For sure, for sure, for sure. You have spoken openly about your own suicide attempt in 2017. Could you share a little bit about what your internal world was at that time? What your emotions and thoughts were? Yeah. So a a year before all that happened, it was, and I have to look at my tattoo. (laughs) I forget. I got it tattooed on me. This is the day I won the world uh, title. Oh, nice. 2016. So, you know, after that, everything was just, life was grand and I was really on top of the world. Mm. Uh, I had my first title defense, I believe, in like early of 2017 or maybe it was January. And then I had my second title defense not too long after that. And in 2017, it was a great year, too, because my husband and I, we got engaged. Mm. And like everything was just feeling so perfect, like too perfect, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I was just so happy, you know, because I met Bruno and immediately like when I met him and I just was like, he's the one I can just like (laughs) our life together. And like, so fighting was still very important to me. It was, I was the champion at the time, was active fighting and he was a fighter too. But then now I have this other set of priorities that I like to have in my life you know like getting married and having a family and things like that so all of that's in my head we get engaged in September and then I need to immediately start preparing for my title defense so I start preparing in October and in November I was supposed to have my my fight this would be my third title defense and I remember going into this fight camp I was the heaviest that I've ever been. I was mm. off vacationing and eating a lot of food <laughs> with my fiance, my husband, yeah. and just enjoying life a bit too much. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, I my weight class that I would compete at is uh, 115 pounds. Uh, and in the organization I was competing in, you were not allowed to dehydrate. So getting to this weight, you had to, you know, diet down. And I was starting this fight camp at about 148, 149 pounds. And you had to lose all that weight in two weeks before you could set your foot on the, in the, on the mat. I, I had about two months to a half months. Okay. Um, okay. Two, yeah. So okay. I was getting Still. down, getting down. And then it was two and a half weeks out before we had to fly out for my fight. It was like maybe two weeks out before I had to fly out to Singapore. And my body was just not losing any more weight. It was very upset with me because I was depleting myself. You know, I was not eating nearly enough calories that I needed for my body to function. And so on top of that, I was just overtraining. I was training, you know, like two or three sessions a day that was like two hours a day and then add cardio in. And so it was like a lot and I just could feel like my body had enough. And so I had 15 pounds still to lose. And I was like thinking to myself, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like I was scared for the first time in my life. I've never missed weight in my life before. So it's a big deal especially when you are holding the belt when you're the champion Mm -hmm. you can lose your belt on the scale so if you don't make your weight requirement they'll strip you of the belt and you know i was just thinking about all of that and i was like 
there's just so much pressure on me to make this weight. And essentially I was feeling like I was killing myself in order to try and make this weight. Like I was like, what do I have to do? Chop off an arm or something. And mm-hmm. like, that was like the mentality. I was like, I have to do something. I don't know what it is, but I need to like do something. I, I don't think that I can make this weight. I need to take myself out of this fight. How am I going to do that? I, I couldn't talk to my family about it. My mom and dad were my coaches also like, and so for them, the mentality was like, you do whatever it takes to make the weight. That was like what I always taught growing up. Mm -hmm. And so my own well-being gets pushed to the side and that focus of do whatever it takes to make the weight or in this case, I knew that wasn't possible. So I said to myself, do whatever it takes to get yourself out of the fight. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of where things kind of turned dark for me that night. My family, my parents, they wanted to do a mock water cut, which makes no sense because you're not even allowed to dehydrate. Mm-hmm. So you know, I was in the hot bath and um, wrapped in towels and I was already feeling very drained and very like on the brink of breaking down like emotionally and physically. And so after that, and then I was supposed to go to bed, I couldn't sleep obviously because hungry, I was hungry. I was looking at the scale. I was like stressed. And so yeah, all of these thoughts start happening in the middle of the night and leading into the early morning. I'm supposed to have a training session at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or something like that. So I'm up at 3 or 4 and I'm thinking of ways to take myself out of the fight. I'm trying to break my arm and that doesn't work. Mm. And I'm bashing my head, trying to give myself a concussion or something and that doesn't work. And so then I'm like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? And so I got the idea to go in my car and I was just gonna leave my life up to fate. And essentially I was, there's this highway that I drive to get to the gym and I was essentially gonna just crash my car. And I don't know what happened after that. So I didn't really care because I, I just felt like this was my only option. And yeah, it's really, it's really sad to like, think back to that moment because like, yeah, it's just really hard. Like, and I I don't really feel it for myself now, but like more that I just think about like my sister when I talk about that, because yeah, I don't know. You know, everyone's different in, in the factors and the things leading up to their moment, but it's just a really scary place to be when when you feel like you don't have any hope left and there's that you feel like that's your only option. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you feel like she felt something similar than like you did? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I mean it feels like a really just that's a lose lose situation like no option trapped like no one to talk to really you know sometimes at that young age yeah go ahead angela yeah especially because like growing up my whole life being taught a certain way that you were you know that you should just power through yeah. You know, and there was no like being told like you know, like the thought of even pulling myself out of this composition was like like I couldn't even like it was just not acceptable, you know, like and so I know that we all grew up with that mindset mentality and it's a great thing to have. It'll push you to the top and it'll teach you, you know, it'll help you to work really hard, but then like Where do you draw that line of Mm -hmm. taking care of yourself, putting yourself first before the belt, before your sport, before whatever it is, you know? And 
So now in hindsight, looking back, I can see it all clearly. But in that moment, I just had no clue. Yeah. And I don't think you knew how to see it differently. I mean, the only way out, like you said, it was to get out of the fight and to take yourself out of the fight. You had to hurt yourself. I mean, hurt your body so that you couldn't even compete. And that's a tough place to be. And I know that this story is your story, but there are a lot of similar stories out there of yours of like feeling like there's no option, not wanting to let your family down. Like, this is the way I've always been. I have to suck it up one more time, you know, and that line is, is a line to be drawn. And I know that's what you're trying to and are doing for those listening to give them hope, you know, and communication skills and like resources to help them speak their heart. You know, I know your sister, she was only 18 years old, Victoria, you guys were really close. You know, she knew your daughter. She was with you all your life. I mean, that's your sister. Even in telling your own story, you think of her. Is there any way in this moment you could share a little bit about the initial impact on you as a sister when you heard the news that she died by suicide? Yeah, it's like the worst day of my life, you know? Um, Mm. Because it was the day after Christmas and we were supposed to go to the gym to train together because she had an upcoming fight. And um, I just got a call from my grandma as I'm making coffee and she's just crying and she said Victoria killed herself. And mm. I just screamed and my husband and my daughter were sleeping upstairs and I had to run upstairs and and tell them we need to get in the car right now. Uh, we need to go. It's one of those mom- memories that I just try to block out, but I never can. Mm. Yeah, it's... um. <laughs> it's still really hard yeah of course I think it will be for the rest of your life and that's just the reality and you're doing so much good work now in honor of her you know she lives on not just that memory that memory is there for something good you know you have built fight story Tell us about it. Tell us about how, you know, Victoria's memory lives on in the work that you're doing every day. Tell us about Fight Story. So, um, you know, after Victoria passed, I I had no idea what was going to happen, what I would be doing. Uh, and, you know, I, I didn't have any motivation for anything. Uh, Mm-hmm. I didn't want to go back to fight. I couldn't even step back in the gym or do a workout without thinking of her because we'd always be training and working out together. Mm-hmm. So I had to step away from all of that because it was too triggering for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I just did a lot of like I just life slowed down for me. I would do a lot of journaling and listen to a lot of music and be outside and play with my daughter. And I mean, one of these days, I just I feel like it was definitely her helping to like send me this like project of something to do because um. I was so lost and I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. But I knew that. I knew that I wanted to make her proud and I wanted to do things that she, like she always wanted to help people. And mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so I wanted to do that too. And yeah, 
like, like that's why I say when people ask, I really feel like Fight Story is something that Victoria and I built together. Mm-hmm. And, and um, everything kind of, I feel like it happened fast. And where we are now, like we've accomplished so much in such a short amount of time and there's still much to, much to do. But I'm really proud of how far we've come. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I, I think I'm honored to know you and to be connected to you and to do this work together and support one another. I've learned so much from you and I look forward to learning more. It's unfathomable. Like I can't even imagine all that you've experienced and look what you're building, you know the inspiration behind it, another expression of your resilience, another expression of your relationship with her, with Victoria. What do you wish, looking back now, that you knew about mental health when you were growing up? I've learned so much in this past year or two. Honestly, growing up, what I knew about mental health was that I just thought it was mental strength and it was Mm. always told to us to be mentally strong like you know to just endure to keep pushing through that's like your mental strength and Mm. I never knew anything other than that I didn't know about that there are so many other factors components and there's so much more to mental health than that you know now I feel like I really put mental health as as my priority to take care of myself so that I'm able to take care of my daughter, my family, and, you know, living life this way, it just, there's so much more balance and joy and finding, like, the purpose of life, you know, like, the reason why we wake up in the morning now, I feel very aligned with the work that I'm doing with Mm. Fine Story. Mm -hmm. And it's always a constant reminder for me because of what I'm doing with Fine Story that like I need to always keep checking in on myself and making sure that I don't get too lost too far again, that I'm constantly daily checking in with myself. And yeah. No, it's good. It's great. That's great. What do you want people to know who are struggling in their own mental health, fighters or non-fighters? What would you want them to know? I would want them to know that what you're feeling right now, it may feel unbearable, but it won't last forever. And I know that's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. but it's true and um you know like fine you're okay take your time if my um attempt was a success then i wouldn't be here today i wouldn't be a mom i wouldn't have Mm. dave i wouldn't get to see this beautiful life that i have and Mm. um You know, that's what I wish I could have shown to Victoria, you know. And so that's what I want everyone else out there to know, is that, you know, life is really hard. It's filled with so much pain and hardship, but there's also so much joy and beauty Mm. and love. Yes. So we just need to hold on and lean on others for support when you don't feel like you can make it. It's, it's not easy to do to open up and share. Angela, I lost you. Oh, okay. You were, you lost, I lost you for a couple of minutes. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm like a mess. No, you're fine. You're real. You're real. If it's okay with you, we can keep all this. But like, this is exactly why. I, I didn't you know. expect to 
break down like this. Like I've been doing lots of talks and stuff, and I like I feel like I've been able to keep a handle on like my emotions, but just something today about talking about about everything just really um <laughs> got me really emotional. So but Angela, I don't I wouldn't expect you to be to not be emotional. Like it's okay. You know, if you feel like this is too private to actually share on the our interview, you let me know and we'll take out whatever you don't feel comfortable with. But it's real. And if Angela Lee can be in touch with her emotions, look how many people you're inspiring to also be in touch with theirs. All these young girls on the mat coming up. There's nothing wrong with it. It's still new for you, though, you know? <laughs> you didn't grow up with it. You didn't grow up knowing how to be with your emotions or talk about them or express them, you know? And so you are you are inspiring others to do that. And, like, I think that being a female athlete, a mom, a wife, is something that's not talked about at all. I mean, you you had Ava, and then you went back and still fought like what the heck like that's that is like so unimaginable I have two kids as you know and I could barely anyway we're not going to go down that road but like that takes a level of discipline fortitude desire and gosh she's seeing you do that what the heck? And she's going to think it's normal. She's going to think that like all moms are like you. What? <laughs> um, tell me like one or two activities that you and Ava and Bruno love to do together. Like what, tell us about like what is like what you like to do and what's super fun for you guys as a family. Uh, we love to go to the beach. Um, so anytime we get a chance, We'll pack up the truck and go. Um, we love playing in the yard. Okay. So Ava, we have like this big trampoline and she just loves that. We all go out and bounce on it and like simple things. Like she loves the bubbles in the yard and she'll go and like pop the bubbles and let the dogs out. And we just got a new puppy. Actually. I saw that on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So you have three now total? Three or four? We do. Three. three. Okay. What are all their names? Um, hold on. Sorry. You're good. <laughs> um, You're good. Uh, so our oldest girl, she's six years old. Her name is Athena. Bruno mm. and I got her right after we got married. Mm. <laughs> and then Yoda is three. He's the same age as Ava. <laughs> He's our Frenchie. And the newest one, she's just about 13 weeks. Her name is Brookie and she's an English bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> they are all so cute. I was cracking up too, looking at like trying to get a family photo. <laughs> oh, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cute. Oh my God. No, I love Thank it. You. Uh, no, people. I, I love how open you are with your life on all levels. It's impactful and important you might not think that but we all i can't speak for all people but i have been very inspired and really respect you and all that you're doing and that's why we've connected and i want to help and so we do this thing together we have fun doing it we learn we teach it's all a part of the human experience and there's a reason why one social media post brought us together and I don't take that lightly. And so, you know, you've heard me say this before, but like anything I can do to help the movement, to help fight the story, you, your ambassadors, like I'm here, myself, Ath Mindset is here, ready for you. And you're doing something really special. And so I'm just very, very happy, happy for you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Honestly, like, I can't believe, like, I don't even know when we, when we first connected from Instagram and like, <laughs> just how much has happened since then. And it's, it's so nice. Honestly, it's, I really value our friendship and 
being able to have conversations like this with each other and you know hopefully continue that in the future but it's i'm really grateful for you thank you lisa yes angela angela we do this no me too me too white stories about telling stories and you did that today so thank you for adding that to our lives enriching us and giving us hope inspiration if you and ava were sitting you know outside maybe you guys just were on the trampoline and you're kind of like taking a little break maybe having some lemonade back there with the dogs and bruno's around like what kind of conversation would you do you have with her about victoria and about how she's going to grow up to be a woman who takes care of herself and you know what kind of conversations do you have with her yeah victoria was actually Ava's godmother as well. Mm-hmm. And we talk about her all the time. You know, I always, if we're eating something she used to like, I always tell Ava like, oh, this is um, godma's favorite food or godma mm-hmm. love this. And when like we see photos or videos, just um, always sharing little things, you know, with her and keeping her memory alive. Yes. Um, Eva yeah. was so young, you know, like she was just one years old and and now she's three, you know. Life is just happening fast. So I just do my best to keep talking about her and it's it's hard, you know, it's it's like really bittersweet. For sure. Yes. But yeah, no one thing is for sure, like I feel like the things that Victoria did in her 18 years, like, and she said it herself, she was like saying that she really feels like she lived a full life and she feels like she did so much in her 18 years, more than some people do in a lifetime. And, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what really put things into perspective for me is like, what is life all about? Like, Mm -hmm making the most of it, doing things that we love to do and finding ways to help others as well. And so, yeah, life for me now is just at a slower pace. I mean, it's really busy. We always got work and trips yeah. and things like that, but yeah, learning to like slow down and really enjoy those moments and be present, you know, that's been really key for me so valuable a lot of us can learn from that slow down and be in the moment angela thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me and sharing your stories and everything you're doing and have experienced and i'm just really grateful for you and for our time together today thank you so much lisa this podcast exists because of the team at CM. CASCM is a B2B content production company helping organizations create and share their stories. We aim to create space where businesses can build assets and drive revenue through writing and talking. Content creation should be enjoyable and accessible. At CASCM, we love helping make that happen. Learn more at CASCM.com.